first time. A bit later tonight, the Salvation Army's Red Kettles are back, and we're talking to them live about where the money goes and why they need your support. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Rob Elgis. And I'm Cheryl Burton. We begin tonight with the final moments of the 2022 campaigns. We are taking a live look tonight at South Suburban Marinette Park, where several Republican candidates are rallying tonight, including the Republican running for governor, Darren Bailey. Governor Pritzker also hosting rallies around the state, stopping at union halls all across the state. This event was in Rockford just an hour ago. Political reporter Craig Wall has the final push to Election Day. Many people taking advantage of the last day of early voting. The candidates, meanwhile, making their final pitch to the voters who have not yet cast their ballots. The two driving issues, support for unions and opposition to vaccine mandates. Last minute voter interest running high at a number of polling places. At this one in East Lakeview, the line stretching down the block and around the corner late this afternoon. Voters heeding pleas from candidates to get out the vote. The champs are here. Darren Bailey and Republican candidate for Attorney General Tom DeVore rallying with dozens of suburban mothers, raising concerns that the Pritzker administration is looking at what steps need to be taken to impose a vaccine mandate on school children. The concerns sparked by a series of emails among top Department of Public Health officials discussing the matter. Let me be clear. I will not appoint an Illinois Department of Public Health director who will attempt to mandate the COVID-19 yeah. vaccine. Yeah. On the Pritzker administration quickly shooting down those concerns, saying in a statement there are no plans to update the vaccine requirement for school-aged children, but it should come as no surprise that Darren Bailey and Tom DeVore are once again playing political games with public health. It is great to see so many people out. Governor J.B. Pritzker, meanwhile, on a six-stop statewide tour with rallies at union halls, drumming up support from labor. Pritzker voicing support for the Workers' Rights Constitutional Amendment, which is on the ballot. In 2018, Team, together we crushed the anti-worker Republican governor Bruce Rauner by the largest margin against any incumbent governor in the history of our state. And we're going to do it again on Tuesday to Darren Bailey. Both sides emphasizing the need to get out the vote. Folks, this is it. We are in the last 24, maybe 36 hours before we win this thing, right? But we're going to have to work for it. It's time that we, the people, get involved, and we do that today and tomorrow by casting our vote, by talking to all of our friends and family so that they show up to vote. Tomorrow, the polls open at 6 a.m., and they will close for good on this election at 7 p.m. Craig Wall, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. And Craig, we are keeping a close eye on our congressional races in the suburbs, the 6th, 11th, and 14th districts. Also hotly contested races and the candidates have been spending big money on ads. Michelle Gallardo speaking to experts about these races. There is no escaping them, the ads. With less than a day to go before election day, the back and forth over the television airwaves resembles a boxing match. Those dedicated to the Illinois congressional races taking on an added importance as Republicans are vying to wrest control of the House of Representatives away from the Democratic Party. It's not a surprise to anyone that what we're expecting to see in January is Speaker McCarthy in control and the Republicans taking control of the House. Really, the question is, how many seats are Democrats going to lose? Naperville's North Central College, where Professor Suzanne Shaw teaches, sits at the crossroads of what are seen as three of the most hotly contested races in the area, the 6th, 11th, and 14th districts, all of which were recently redrawn and all of which have Democratic incumbents running. Every seat that the Democrats can hold on to gives them an advantage, gives them more of a voice in Congress, gives them more leverage. But even as these three districts are running tighter races than expected, will any of them actually flip? With 70 percent of the 14th district's voters being new, Lauren Underwood's race against Scott Grider has received a lot of attention, bringing President Biden to town this weekend. And even Bill Foster's race against Catalina Lauf in 11 has become more competitive. There's this perception that there is a, a momentum and it's headed in, in the Republican direction that the Democrats have fared pretty well over the summer. But 
in the fall, the momentum shifted. And yet, some believe none of these three districts will actually flip and that the nonstop ads are simply a way for each party to mobilize its base and for political action groups to plant the seed for future election cycles. In some ways, Republicans are playing the long game in some of these districts that they don't necessarily expect to flip tomorrow, but maybe two years from now. In Naperville, I'm Michelle Gallardo, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Incredible turnout the last day early voting at Centennial Ice Center. This is in Wilmette. Polls were supposed to close at five, but anyone who was still in line at that time was able to cast their ballot. Many staying in line to make sure they could vote. Wilmette not alone in seeing lines of voters today. We visited the Evanston Civic Center today where the line stretched into the street. We spoke to a new American citizen there, excited to make her voice heard. It is really important to be informed and to exercise that right. Don't, don't let this pass. Don't take it for granted. Uh, this is a privilege. So far, the Cook County Clerk's Office reports that more than 305,000 votes have been cast early in suburban Cook County. That's compared to more than 338,000 early votes back in 2018. And there is help available for Illinois and Indiana voters tomorrow with an election protection hotline for nonpartisan assistance. Volunteers with the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights will be taking calls and answering questions. We are nonpartisan, so in no circumstances do we tell anyone which party or candidate to vote for. But we're here for any questions that people may have about the voting process. And the Election Protection Hotline is ready to assist voters with any questions or issues impacting their ability to cast a vote. You can call that number at 1-866-OUR-VOTE for help. 1-866-OUR-VOTE for help. You can also learn more about the candidates and find more at polling places on our online voters guide. It's available online on our website and on our news app. Are you ready? We are. Be sure to watch our comprehensive election night coverage. It all starts right here on Eyewitness News at 7 tomorrow night. You can watch at abc7chicago.com or wherever you stream. We'll also have updates on TV throughout the evening and complete coverage on Eyewitness News at 10. Fewer than 24 hours now, Cheryl. Yeah. We're up and running. We are, and there is another big player in the game. Tomorrow night it won't be on the ballot, but it will be outside. Mother Nature, always an important to note how we can see as we look at a live picture at the Blue Cross Blue Shield building, epilepsy awareness here in Chicago. The city is glistening in lights the night before the big election. Everybody wants to know what the weather is going to be like because, Phil, that plays a huge role in turnout as well. Yeah, it certainly can, and the weather will not be an issue come tomorrow. More quiet weather heading our way. Partly cloudy skies out there right now. Uh, temperature is sitting at 46 degrees out at O'Hare. Look at the high temperatures we saw during the day today. Most places seasonably cool. 54 at O'Hare, 53 in Gurney, 58 for a high at Midway. And right now we're still at 44 degrees in Palatine, 45 in Gary. Tomorrow we start in the upper 30s to mid 40s. Look how we climb though into the mid 50s tomorrow once again. But we do have a brief but impressive warming trend as we head into Wednesday. We go up to 68 and look at that high Thursday 74 degrees. The record for November 10th is 75 and that was set just two years ago. We'll tell you about the big change that's heading our way. The coldest weather of the season by this weekend. More of that coming up in just a few minutes from now. Robin Sher. All right, Phil, thank you. A $15,000 reward is being offered for any information leading to an arrest in the shooting of three brothers. The victims were all hit by bullets outside their family's Auburn Gresham home near 76th and Walcott. Two of the brothers are teenagers. The third is 21 years old. All three attended St. Sabina Church and the oldest working as a youth mentor with the congregation. Here we go again. You know, how long do we still continue to watch our kids being shot? Good-hearted boys, man. Like, into none of that. That's what makes it so tragic. Church members are planning to hand out reward flyers in the neighborhood tomorrow morning. Today, the man convicted in the deaths of six family members was sentenced to life in prison. These murders happened inside a Gage Park home in 2016. The victims' ages ranged from 62 to just 10 years old. Prosecutors say Diego Uribe shot, beat, or stabbed the victims in what they described as a robbery that, quote, spiraled out of control. He declined to give a statement before he was sentenced. 
and tragedy for a family after a suburban high school soccer player has passed away after contracting mono. Ryan Plowman was a key member of the Shepherd High School soccer team, helping them win class 3A regional. We have been told that he was diagnosed with mono shortly after his season ended. He died this past Saturday. We will hear from the 17 year olds family tonight on ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 10 o'clock. Richard Allen, the man charged in connection with the murders of two Delphi, Indiana teenagers, remains in custody at an undisclosed state facility. The Indiana Department of Corrections has released a new mugshot of Allen, who had previously been transferred from county jail for safety reasons. Indiana State Police arrested Allen for the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German in 2017. He has pleaded not guilty, and the trial has been scheduled for March of next year. And a sit-in today at Jones College Prep to address what students say are ongoing issues at that school. Now, this comes after a student dressed up in what many perceived as a Nazi uniform and goose-stepped across the stage. We've blurred the faces of those involved because they are minors. The principal has been removed pending an investigation, but students say more needs to be done. The administration completely mishandled this event and also the fact that they allowed a students that come into school dressed as a Nazi. It's just absolutely disgusting to me. We reached out to CPS regarding today's sit in, but have not heard back. Last week, CPS acknowledged the harm that the Halloween incident may have caused. Despite 18 dissenting votes, Mayor Lori Lightfoot's $16.4 billion city budget for 2023 was passed today by the city council. The passage of this budget, those who voted yes, reaffirmed our responsibilities as fiduciaries of the public trust. So what do we have to show for this CTA investment? A system plagued by service disruptions, delay, crime and filth. Budget includes more spending for affordable housing, homelessness, infrastructure and public safety but does not raise property taxes in what will be a mayoral election year. Health officials warning tonight about what might turn out to be the worst flu season in years. Now, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, hospitalizations are the highest for this point in the season since the 2010-2011 season. About 4,300 people are in hospitals with the flu this week compared to about 2,300 last week. The best preventive measure really is to get your vaccination. Uh, it may not entirely eliminate the possibility of disease, but it'll certainly reduce the duration of illness. And doctors are also concerned that diseases could spread more over the holidays as people are hosting and getting together. The American Red Cross is trying to get ahead of a potentially severe flu season. It is asking people to donate blood and platelets right now. The Red Cross says when seasonal illnesses increase, the number of healthy donors tends to decrease, and that leaves the organization's blood supply vulnerable to a potential shortage over the holidays. Heads up for people who plan on flying out of O'Hare Airport's Terminal 5. The closest lot to the terminal, the International Terminal, will see reduced availability starting tomorrow. Other airlines come through there now. Uh, that's when crews will expand their efforts to build a new parking garage where Lot D is located. The construction is needed to build the six story garage that officials say will more than double parking capacity. Projects expected to be completed in 2024. Well, tonight, the Arlington Heights Village Board is expected to vote on a roadmap for an agreement with the Chicago Bears. The document laying out financing and potential zoning changes that could make the Arlington race course the next move for the team. The plan faces some public backlash over the possible use of taxpayer money to help build a massive entertainment hub around the stadium. Tomorrow's going to be a special day for one yeah. Chicago lawyer. She will be sworn in as a naturalized citizen and voting for the first time. Race and culture reporter Will Jones speaking with her this afternoon. When Karen Via Gomez becomes a naturalized citizen tomorrow and votes in her first ever election, there will be a flood of emotions. Finally feeling like I'm fully in a place where I'm stable and I can't be, no one can ever place me in removal proceedings again. Just 13 years ago, the then University of Rochester freshman was trying to get back home to Chicago for spring break when she was detained by Border Patrol agents at the airport. This is the thing that I think undocumented people fear like their whole lives. Via Gomez, who came to the U.S. with her family when she was a toddler, was detained for two days. Her case was sent to an immigration judge. Even though it was eventually dropped, the experience inspired her to change career plans. I knew that 
what drove me to want to go to law school was just the way that the law had affected my life and how important the laws are in, in our society. Right after she finished her undergraduate degree in 2012, DACA was established. Via Gomez married an American citizen in 2018, which put her on a pathway to citizenship. Tomorrow, she will be thinking about the DACA recipients whose future in this country remains in limbo. I would feel so much more satisfied if I was becoming a U.S. citizen because there was a change in the law. As an American citizen, Pia Gomez says she promises she will continue to use her voice to help people in need, including those who are undocumented. Will Jones, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Gladwell shared her story with yeah, us. Yeah, incredibly inspiring. And then how fulfilling will it be the pride tomorrow she will experience, of course, making that vote. Probably a lot of yeah. people like her who have been become citizens now mm -hmm. get to exercise their vote. It's going to be a special yeah. day. Wow, it's a powerful thing, yeah. you know, exercising your right, of course. Yeah. Uh, for the first time in decades, the lights at Wrigley Field are getting upgraded. And Chicago's Christmas tree, it is on the move. People in Florida are preparing for Nicole mm. making sandbags in Orlando. That's a storm and the storm could strengthen into a category one hurricane before making landfall late Wednesday night. Florida does not need another yeah. hurricane. Wow, they are dealing with a lot that way, especially because a lot of people haven't even recovered from Hurricane Ian. Uh, right, right. Yeah. on the Gulf Coast particularly. Yeah, uh, be a mess. hopefully that avoids them. We don't have to worry about that. No, it's closer look at to that. home as we look at the city tonight. There's talking about moons. I heard Phil talking about something earlier about 430 in the morning. Yeah, um, he's going to be up right and early. Really, How did you yeah. do on the time change? Are you adjusted? I like the extra hour and I felt like, um, you know, I needed it and I could feel it. <laughs> we all need it, but it's getting used to it. That's so hard, yeah, it's right? The, the SAD, the seasonal affective disorder, right. um, the sad because it gets dark at 430. <laughs> yeah, yeah SAD. Right. Yeah, I think we took a shot. Uh, uh, at 445 yeah. going into Weatherfield and it was already dusk. Right. Yeah. It's like sunset's going to be 428 in a minute. Yep. <laughs> it's when is the day start getting longer? About the December 21st. 21st. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just a little on. over a month. Right. We can do countdown. this. We can yeah. do this. But they talked about how people, their driving habits change when it gets darker earlier. Huh. And more accidents happen at this time of year because... Uh. That would make sense. It changes your perception when you're driving because normally you leave your job at 5.30, 5, 6, and it's still daylight. But now, you. yeah. Day, it's daylight in the morning, Phil. So yeah, those who get up that. early, right? Uh, the kids are off. That's our, the payoff, right? Yeah, my right. Boy otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, it would be you know still dark at eight o'clock in the morning, uh, at least in, once we get into December. But boy, we have weather that is anything but winter-like heading our way, at least for a few days. Thursday, the warmest day we'll likely see in months. We're forecasting a high of 74. The normal high is 51, and the record for November 10th, 75. Now that was set just two years ago. We're going to get awfully close to that. 
come Thursday afternoon and then things start to change. Check out the highs today off to the East Coast. New York City got up to 80 degrees. Washington DC 81 mid 80s in places like Atlanta and Jacksonville. Numerous records were set, but the cold air that's starting to move into our area, uh, the core of it is staying to our north and northwest. Look at the high in International Falls 37, just 36 in Minneapolis. We made it up to a seasonally cool 54 degrees. This cold air is just going to kind of graze our area uh, during the day, during the evening tonight into tomorrow, and then things really change. Look at this 68 Wednesday, 74 Thursday, and then temperatures absolutely plummet during the day Friday. That 44 degree temperature that will happen during the early parts of the day, and then temperatures will continue to fall. Could be a brief shower early Friday, maybe a flurry Saturday with highs this weekend only in the mid 30s. That's a far cry from where we were today. 54 degrees. That's not bad. Very close to the average high of 53 degrees. Right now it's actually mostly cloudy at O'Hare, but these are those high thin clouds. 46 degrees with a northeast wind at 12. 44 in, for you folks in Naperville. 45 in Joliet. Down to a uh, nippy 38 in Merrillville. And you can see most of the Midwest in the mid 30s to mid 40s. Quiet conditions around here. Few clouds. These are those high thin clouds. They'll move out later tonight. Meanwhile, off to the north, you can see a hint of snow trying to develop up around Minneapolis. But for the most part, the, the, the main concern weather wise is down here. You can see here's the coast of Florida. The circulation here, that is Nicole. Maximum winds now 45 miles per hour. It is expected to become a tropical storm later tonight. Take a turn towards the southwest pass across the northern Bahamas and then make late landfall late Wednesday night into early Thursday somewhere north of Miami, probably north of Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale up towards West Palm Beach, travel across the state of Florida and then take a turn to the north up into sections of Georgia. This will bring a lot of rain to the Sunshine State. For us, well, we're watching this high pressure system. It continues to control our weather. It's going to gradually move to the east. So more of an east than northeast flow tomorrow coming in off the lake. We'll make it up to 55 degrees, still a few degrees above normal and a good amount of sunshine. As we head into Wednesday and that high heads towards the east coast, southerly winds will push temperatures into the upper 60s. And the truly unseasonably warm day that comes Thursday, mostly sunny, high of 74 as this system lifts to the northeast. Blizzard conditions in the Dakotas and northern Minnesota. This is the cold front that means business and that will arrive before daybreak on Friday. Overnight tonight, moonlit skies, chilly. You know, there'll be a few clouds from time to time. 31 to 40 for your temperature range with the warmer readings here in the city. Highs lakefront tomorrow, 52, well inland, 59. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow unseasonably warm Wednesday, Thursday, and then temperatures really fall Friday. It will be a windy day. Nothing better than the mid thirties this weekend. It could even be a few flurries on Saturday. Oh, wait, I made, I made it. Do you see that 74? Yeah. Oh, I know. 35, and then 35. for a high. Uh, yes, yeah, stand in front of 35. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I've got my coffee brewing. So, for the, so right. we had our election meeting before the show, mm -hmm. big zoom, uh, and I didn't make my coffee like I do before this and okay. village offered to make my coffee to Des. who are you? I was going to make oh. it. I was going to fill it. Well, you can push the button. <laughs> well, no, well, come on. See, it it's called, nice. this is the, you know, dream team. I know. It's the stream team. Teamwork so, makes the dream work. I mean, once in a while. So I'm back. If you could go get that for me, Phil, and bring it back. Be cool. <laughs> okay. Did no, you guys, I don't trust him now. Right. I don't <laughs> trust him now. I got it. I got it. We just got to do the, a couple stories. How did you guys do for your extra hour? What you guys do? I know Phil it's had to hard. work. I but, slept. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's uh, Snoop, so our dog, uh, he's a year old now, and Biggie the same yeah. way. Yeah. They, the time chain doesn't affect their feeding. They want to eat. And oh, so now it's wow. five in the morning instead of six, and Wendy's usually up with him. But it's a tough adjustment. So he ate 648. twice. 48. Yeah, he ate twice. Scratching at the door. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know the specific time and everything. They know. All right. Are you going to talk about that moon sighting <laughs> yes, um, later on? Okay, good. Because that looked pretty cool. Yeah, he's I got mean, some knowledge for us. I so know. those he's who are unadjusted. Yeah, he our is. correspondent. He's going to go yeah. live for the morning yeah. show. We haven't told him that he yet. Should. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. That's going to happen. All right, my coffee's almost done, so we're going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being so nice, by oh, the way. Oh, you're making it. Well, you're just yeah, multitasking. Wow, speak. you're really talented. Oh, look at this. Yeah, that's a stretch. <laughs> oh, we're not seeing this kind of snow okay, yet. Okay, yeah. Look. Oh, no. Why? We know Why did we have Chicago, to show this? Yeah, it can bring all kinds of snow. <laughs> and if you live in Aurora, you may be able to get help clearing the snow. Tomorrow, registration will open for Aurora Senior Shovel Program. This is a great program. Look at Volunteers that. Oh. clear driveways and sidewalks free 
for people over 60 or with uh, disabilities or mm -hmm. medical conditions. So that starting the program opens tomorrow at night and people too many good people out there. It's great. I mean, I mean they come out and they help and they don't mind. The don't kindness and generosity of strangers on full display. I mean, it is so helpful and needed, especially it's for seniors. You got to be careful yeah. with that heavy snow, too. So heads up in Aurora. It's just hard to watch that video. <laughs> that was from a <laughs> here too. And it's going to be like 74 later on this week. So, uh, but you got to sign up early. So it's important that yeah, we let definitely. everybody know. And we want to tell everybody, too, about this Chicago's official Christmas tree. Ooh. Yeah, it's made the trek all the way from the suburbs to the city at Millennium Park. It is a 55 foot Colorado blue spruce. Say that three times. <laughs> Last week we told you it came from the Glissovic family in North Suburban Morton Grove. Now the tree needs to be decorated, of course, ahead of the lighting ceremony. And that's just 11 days away. Next yeah, Friday on the 18th. That is so cool right. to watch the process, right? So they'll fill that with other branches because you look at it now and you'll see it after uh, it looks even different. But that is it's huge. But the lights there. and the, the yes, ornaments right. that will fill it too. I mean, all of that decorations and it's going to be 74 this week. You know, that's a perfect day to go back and do that holiday decoration. You don't have to light it up. Right. But put them out in. there because I it was too time. windy last weekend. I think remember? It's time to light up. There are a couple houses okay. in our Ooh. neighborhood. I mean, here really? we are almost in mid November. Right. Light Holiday Lights Parade is in oh, 12 away. days. Right. 12 days. So, time to turn you know, on the lights. I've already got Santa's <laughs> workshop is <laughs> already. I've got the, you know, wrapping paper out, boxes. I've got my list of who gets what. And nice. I mean, and I already set some stuff out. We today. were walking in the neighborhood at dark with the, with the pooch, oh, okay. and you could see in some homes. Not oh. that we're like looking. Uh, right. uh -oh. So you're like, oh, that's Rob Elgis. Why is he, why is he looking at my house again? Right, right. Uh, but people had their decorations up, Christmas trees and everything. They had trees up too? Yes. It was awesome. Wow, was I nice. love that. Some people do the day after Halloween. Yeah, they after have, it. you know, and some homes have several trees, you know, one in every other room. So you got to get started. I'm like <laughs> totally, because you only get like six weeks I, to we, enjoy it. We are in the same, So, yeah, you know, the music Christmas. is already going. Listen to it started I, this weekend. Oh, I did it yesterday, okay. all day yesterday. Yeah, it was Phil, so we have not started yet, I'm guessing. <laughs> it was so nice. No. I have my um, Christmas playlist. It's just nice. This is about time. Yeah, all right. Baseball season a long ways away. But okay. Wrigley Field was full of action today, and people were wondering what this chopper was doing. Uh-oh. Crews mm. used a helicopter to replace the ballpark's lights, the original ones put in back in 1988. Do you remember that night? Wow, it was yes. so crazy, the, the, the rain delay and all that. So the field will have new LED lights, which are supposed okay. to improve brightness for mm -hmm. night games and use less energy at the same time. That's the ultimate goal, and right? Save longer. some money on those. Yes, right, and save some money on those LEDs. So we got Chopper 7 HD filming the helicopter, <laughs> dropping the lights in, A lot too. of choppers right. up on the north side today. Right, that should have been a really cool sight, though. Yeah. All right, well, texts and calls that appear to be from the government, but they are fake just uh -oh. ahead. We're going to let you know how to avoid falling for these scams. Plus, making it easier to see fees on Airbnbs, the changes the company's making to address your complaints. And the reason singer Aaron Carter's cause of death has yet to be released. We'll be right back.
It's a scam that often starts with a call, text, or email, and it can end with a devastating financial loss. Well, people think they're being contacted by the government, but they are not. And consumer investigator Jason Knowles has the details for you. Scammers impersonating government workers to fool you and get your money. The Indiana Attorney General recently issued an alert about this. Here's a quick tip on how to beware of the government imposter scam. It typically starts with a call, text, or email that can ultimately end up in a devastating financial loss. So don't wire money, use gift cards, or cryptocurrency to pay someone who says they are with the government. Don't trust your caller ID. Your caller ID might show the government agency's real phone number, but caller ID can be faked. Don't click on links in emails or text messages from strangers or anyone saying they are from the government. Also, go with your gut. If you suspect fraudulent activity, delete the message or hang up the phone. Jason Knowles, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Jason, for the quick tip. Twitter is reportedly delaying a plan to charge users $8 a month to get that blue check to show your accounts verified. CNN reports the change will come after the midterm election. It had briefly been rolled out over the weekend. The social media platform says it's also cracking down on impersonators. Anyone pretending to be someone else without posting that it's a parody will be permanently suspended. Comedian Kathy Griffin is suspended after changing her Twitter name and picture to Elon Musk's. Airbnb says it will make pricing more transparent. The company responding to customer complaints about hidden fees. The home rental site will roll out an option next month to display the total cost of renting a property, including cleaning and other fees, instead of just the nightly rate before those fees are added. And Apple is warning shipments of the new iPhone 14 and 14 Max could be delayed. It is because of COVID restrictions in China. The world's largest assembly site for the iPhones had to be cut back on the operations. Close to two billion dollars now up for grabs. One plus one is two. One, two. A billion each. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Powerball jackpot. That's what we're talking about. Uh, that's now crushing all the previous records. Plus the big moments from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. The autopsy results for Aaron Carter are being deferred as authorities say they need to investigate further. The 34-year-old singer's body was found inside his California home over the weekend. An autopsy was done on Sunday, but the coroner's office says additional information is needed to confirm the cause of death. And Carter's older brother, Nick, is in the Backstreet Boys who had a tribute to Aaron during a show in the UK last night. Nick was visibly emotional during the moment and his bandmates came over and they hugged him. Nick and Aaron had a difficult relationship. Aaron struggled with substance abuse and mental health. Nick got restraining orders against his brother, but says he always loved his brother. Duran Duran's Andy Taylor has stage four cancer. He says he was diagnosed with the 
uh, metastatic prostate cancer four years ago and says his condition has no cure. The band read a letter from the guitarist while being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this weekend. There was plenty of lighter mm. moments during the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Of course, Lionel Richie all night long, Pat Benatar, Carly Simon among the inductees, and remember how Dolly Parton had asked not to be nominated? You remember yes. that, right? Oh, yeah. Then she ended up making it come back and decided to write a special rock and roll song. So she felt she could truly deserve the honor. If I'm going to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I'm going to have to earn it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. She is a queen, of course. She has already earned it. That was all she needed to do was a right, exactly. one chord on that Done. guitar. You're in. Done. Um, Dolly Parton was also joined by fellow inductees for a performance of her hit song, Jolene. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have covered that song. Yes. But she sings it. Good for her. Really. I mean, she's yeah, so talented. She didn't want to be a part of it. And they were like, no, you're going to be a part of it. Right. And so she... She did. So she just said she earned it. Yeah, she oh, yeah. Nice. just like that. Congratulations to guitarist. all the inductees. Yes, it was a good class. I mean, incredible, amazing, phenomenally talented people. Yeah, it was good. It was Legacies good. and icons there. I got one number on all my Powerball tickets. I think I played five, so not all. Did you Did you play this? I one? won $4. Yes, yep, look at you. I went Your family's checked. hot. You know, I know, coming right. in hot. Your coming dad, in. or your, dad, your uh, brother, brother, brother won right. 40 bucks. Right, four. Maybe it is your it dad four. looking down right. saying, yeah. oh yeah, it was, it was 40. Four. Remember we had to, it was <laughs> only four. It. Don't come for his 40. Right. Um. <laughs> that correction. So the two years have made eight bucks. Right, okay, but then we replayed it. Because okay. I went and bought some more. That's how I found out I won four today. I okay. replayed it for another new ticket. Well, you got to get more. Because <laughs> tonight's Powerball yeah. jackpot is so big. It's nearly $400 million bigger than the previous jackpot record. And it will keep growing until someone finally wins. So it could stop at tonight's $1.9 billion. Crazy. Jackpot started at $20 million back in August. Summer. It's been rolling over ever since. Tonight's drawing is the largest jackpot ever. So it is tonight. Yep. I should have known that. You know what's so interesting how so nobody plays at 20 million. They're like, eh, right. 20 million. Yeah, I mean, you know, right. nobody right. plays at 100 million, right. you know. And then when it starts getting 500 and 800 and 1 billion, then people play. How has no so. one won yet? It's got to happen. Oh, no, they were Tonight's saying tonight. about certain numbers that win all the time, 66 and 32. Those numbers are generally always in the Powerball. I haven't even gotten so, the Powerball. Like, that's the only one I want because you win, you I think. You get some money yeah, for the Powerball. Some. So good luck out well, there. I think um, three people are going to win this time. Wow, I, I like do. the prediction. I do. I think three people are going to win. So I, back here tomorrow night, well, we'll be doing election coverage. Some, but, yeah, we, so. <laughs> so wait, even if we win, we got to come back. Yeah, because we wouldn't want to hang our, our teammates. Oh, our, oh, no, that was on the Zoom. Our, you know, assistant news director said if you win the you Powerball, still gotta you still got to come. Yeah. Uh, two billion? <laughs> I'm coming in and coming if in. I win and then I'm going to just quit on the air. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I will get it done. You know, I, okay. and then I'm out. You, right. You know what? Because you're doing all the numbers tomorrow. You're doing the numbers board. You can slide it and then go boom. <laughs> I make a special graphic. A I won. F y'all. No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> that. oh God. I'm okay. Not. He said that. Uh, Write him letters. Yeah, fun. You're going to get in trouble. Fun, y'all. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fun. That was good. That was thinking? a good fix up. Well, good luck tonight. <laughs> good luck. I hope somebody. You predict three winners. I bet you're close. I do. I think so. Okay. But what is it? Okay, what does one take home for a total amount? If one winner, what will you got to take the cash option, which would be now like one point two like, million, yeah, in the billions, billion? and then you got to pay taxes on that. Oh, oh, okay. So probably less than a billion. Oh, can you can you can you can you deal with eight hundred million? I don't know. Fine. I already offered you what I think I told the crew. We said ten million. Ten million, each. ten million, yeah. So I'm, I'm still on that. If I win solely. 10 million each. Nice. Right. I'm good. Yeah, you're right. Wait, wait, you weren't here Friday to accept it. Oh, was he, who was oh, here, wait, Larry? Oh, I don't get 10 million. Well, yeah, you get I'll, 10 million because you're here today. <laughs> you get a million. <laughs> so I'll take it or leave it. You take it? I want 10 million. Yeah. All right. Well, did you, you play? got it. No. Ah, what? You're not going to play at all? I doubt it. Do you, did you play? Have you played in the last billion week? No. Like, no. no? You, and you've probably saved more money than all of us okay. who have played and gotten wow. nothing. Yes. Yeah. I got four dollars. Thank you very much. OK, <laughs> we gotta move on. I'm jealous. I got nothing. All right. Let's talk about signs of the holiday season. Yep. 
You can hear the sounds and you can hear the bells ringing. Yes. The red kettles are back. Coming up next, we're talking to the Salvation Army about how this money gets used all year long. But first, let's check in with Phil. Hey, Brugal, Phil. Brugal Phil. Hey. He's okay. Brugal Phil. We have a nice warm up. Not so much tomorrow, though. It will be a few degrees warmer getting into the mid 50s tomorrow. The warm up gets going Wednesday, kicks into high gear Thursday, and then we fall like a rock temperature wise as we head towards Friday. Your entire forecast in a few minutes. Did you see or hear one of these today? The iconic Salvation Army mm. red kettles are back. I like that sign, doing the most good. The kettles are a crucial fundraiser for the Salvation Army. So joining us tonight in this hour of power on the stream team is Major Caleb Sen. Welcome to the show on this Way to Go Motivation Monday. How you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Sure. How was it out there ringing today and talking to the media for you? It was gorgeous. It was bright. It was sunny. It was the iconic symbol of the season making its return. So a lot of fun this morning. Major, can you talk about the work the Salvation Army does and why these kettles matter so much to the cause? Yeah, we start with basic needs, right? So making sure people have a safe place to sleep, have plenty of food, have warm clothes, and all they need to be on the right start to having a new life. And these red kettles are absolutely our biggest fundraiser of the year. We could not do what we do without these red kettles. Yeah, you talk about 50 different social service programs that you help and collaborate with. And now you really have come forward into the new age. You can do a digital, no more excuses if you don't have cash, because a lot of people don't carry cash right. anymore or change. After the pandemic, of course, nobody really carries um, coins anymore. So talk about taking the payments digital and how it's so easy to now donate. That's right. On all of our kettle signs, you're going to see a QR code or a tap to pay. Just touch your phone to that. Take a picture of the QR code. Brings you right to our online giving portal. You can also go online at salarmychicago.org and give your gift that way. We are relying more and more each year, as you've already said, on our online donations. So some of those I can just take because I just got my new credit card and it's one of those touch and I could just touch that card. Uh, and, and make the donation right there, standing next to someone ringing the bell. I don't think we're that quite advanced yet. I think okay. you still have to take your entire phone gotcha. and tap that, tap that uh, NSC code. And that QR code is so easy. You just turn your camera on, yeah. you snap it, it goes right, right to the site. We it's every it's so excited to spend some money already. Yeah, right. so you got a new if I, win, card. if I win the lot, the lottery, <laughs> right? Uh, tens of millions is going exactly. to Salvation Army. That's a no yes. brainer. You heard uh, it right here, Caleb. Yeah, okay. Right. I heard it. <laughs> okay, well, I wanted to say, but re re uh, realistically, though, Caleb, uh, there are some really generous people every yeah. year. We always do stories on them. Can you talk about that? That occasionally you get people who put these rather expensive coins in the mm -hmm. kettle. And who Absolutely. are they, Caleb? We right. <laughs> yeah, we get gold coins from all over the world. So wow. in South Africa, we've seen some um, from Asia. We've seen some from all over. And these 
donors are absolutely anonymous. We cannot track those coins. What? And it just blows me away that people are that generous. They'll just give that freely. See, I'm so glad they never figured it out it was me. So very, that's great. Yeah, I'm so right. <laughs> but that's great. They don't want to yeah. be recognized. Right. They're just giving to, to the Salvation and Army, and they're good with how it. How much are those coins worth, Caleb? Anywhere from like $400 up to $2,000 each. Okay, wow. So that's a huge gift with no recognition whatsoever. And it See? adds up so fast. It does. Now, we've done it before. Most of, you know, they've always come and asked news anchors and reporters right. to ring the bells. How can people sign up to be a part of this wonderful opportunity? Uh, we would love that. We love our volunteers. Can't do it without them. The best place is registertoring.com. You're going to go to that site. It's going to take you to a place near your house. We want it to be as convenient as possible for you. You can sign up for a two-hour shift, sign up for a six-hour shift, mm -hmm. bring your friends, your kids, your dog, uh, do whatever you've got to do to come out and help somebody else know a better Christmas this year. And so it's not just people you see on TV. Anyone yeah, can sign anybody. up on the website. Yeah. Anyone can sign up, absolutely. I did not know I that. think that's a fun family event. Yes. Everybody bring the dog, you know, Snoop Dogg comes down. You Wendy, tell your, your neighbors wife, you're going to be there, and then they, yeah. they can go and help out. It's great. Really uh, nice. Major Caleb Sen from the Salvation Army. Uh, maybe you could join us after the holiday season and tell us how well you did. I would love to do that. Thanks. And yeah, we appreciate yeah, best you. Best blessings to you and happy holidays, of course. It's fun really to ring nice. that bell. Especially when it's not really cold out. Right. Now, if you've ever done it when yeah. it's cold and you're out there for two hours or an hour, yeah, it oh adds my up. goodness. But it's, it, people show you so much love and gratitude and you, you really get a sense of, 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 of a reality check when you see the value of people and their kindness. Yeah, if you've so. never done it at home, sign up and yeah. it, I think it's really, yeah, I you're right. I think making a family affair might it's make good. it even better. You're not standing out there by yourself, <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, it's your turn, 20 minutes with the bell, your turn, 20 minutes. So. Wendy always brings them hot chocolate or coffee. See? And I bet they get a lot of that. I mean, she's not alone. People will just be like, here, right. warm up. Here's a donut. Oh, that's here's so something. sweet. And yeah. that's out by your neighborhood or does she come and, down? Anywhere. Back when she used to work down here, okay. she'd do it too. That's yeah. so sweet. So and she's such a sweetheart. You got lucky. You did, did. really well. Yeah, okay. I, you know. I'll kick my coverage for sure. Yeah. Um, the, host of the, too. the host of the 2023 <laughs> Oscars. That's ahead. You watch us. You probably know who it is. Yeah. Plus a surprising announcement from actress Rebel Wilson. And the sight in the sky that might have you staying up late or in Phil's case, waking up quite mm -hmm. early tomorrow. We'll tell you more about this. A familiar face will return to host the Oscars next year. Jimmy Kimmel set to host the show for the third wow. time. Only a hand handful of people have done that before. Bob Hope holds the record, hosting 11 times. Wow. Kimmel hosts after this past year's show saw a trio of female hosts, Wanda Sykes, Regina Hall, and Amy Schumer. Uh, before the Oscars, before that, the Oscars went several years without a host. Remember that? Oscar nominations be announced January 24th. The Oscars are March 12th the greatest day ever yeah. uh, live know, on right? ABC. Yeah. 
it is a great Super Soul Sunday. I mean, it's in my birthday. eyes, I knew that. Oh, you did? <laughs> that's why I said a Super Soul Super Sunday. Soul. Yeah, and I know that's what you're going to do. You're going to celebrate the Oscars on your birthday. Yes. That's you, You've got to win that a trophy. Right. Yeah. A participation <laughs> trophy for watching. <laughs> yeah, there's some, some good movies. And Jimmy Kimmel is really fun he's every fun. night here he well. on ABC7. And he's just, his monologues are so funny. Hopefully no so. one's hit this time. Yeah, we don't want we don't that. that. Can you believe it's almost time it, again? Like it that fast? Seem, yeah. It's it a, it's November. It's almost November twelfth. Right. Like moving along. We're got four months away. Yeah, we'll see what gets nominated. You yeah. got anything so far? I have not seen a whole lot of great. Okay. No, I don't know. I don't have anything for you. Okay. Yeah. Wakanda yeah. forever. Right, that should get nominated I think for a few on several things. Several levels. Um, what yeah. was there was one film everybody's saying he is shoe in for. Oh. Uh, and it's not even out here yet. Oh, it's not uh, out. Best actor. I, I can't remember what it was. Uh, oh, Harry it's uh, Brendan Fraser. No. Oh, Brendan Fraser. Because well, oh. that movie came out overseas. Yeah. At, yeah. yeah, The Whale. The Whale. Okay. Uh, everybody's like, that, that. he's definitely nominated and really? may win. Yeah, he's an obese man, tries to reconnect with his daughter, and it's supposed to be really good. Oh. Yeah. It, oh. Yeah, but I don't that think sounds, it's been yeah, okay. it overseas. All right. Oh, but it's coming. Yes. Here. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about Rebel Wilson. Guess what, everybody? Congratulations. Yeah, oh, she is a mommy. She posted a picture of her daughter, Royce Lillian, on social media today. That is a beautiful name. She thanked her surrogate for caring the girl with, quote, grace and care. Wilson's yeah. announcement surprised many, but she opened up to people about her fertility journey. That was back in 2019, you'll recall. She said she didn't want to be on a relationship timeline and thought she could be a mom alone. But back in June, though, you recall that Wilson announced she was in a relationship with fashion designer Ramona Agruma. Congratulations. Baby looked all swaddled and comfortable. I mean, so so just cozy. Really I just, just want to squeeze wanted to it. Yeah. Kiss the baby's face. And yeah. I mean, what a blessing for her to become. The name is so powerful. Royce well, especially Lillian. after she had had some trouble, right? Yeah. To, talking about her fertility three or four mm -hmm. years ago. And now to, I mean. And now to see full exciting. circle. So congratulations. Holiday blessing. That's yeah. The best be present of all. holiday for them. I know, right? They're just going to all be staring at the baby with the, they're gathering with her family. So. <laughs> We're going to revisit this story that you mentioned, uh, keep your eyes in the skies overnight, because okay. there's a total lunar eclipse. It's set to happen before dawn. Earth will pass directly between the moon and sun. It's known as a blood moon and will appear reddish orange from the light of Earth's sunsets and oh. sunrises. Next total lunar eclipse won't happen until 2025, and Phil's going to break it down more for us. Do you remember that total eclipse? And I remember it was in August. It was the month of August, and you it happened like 11 seconds. That's all. Is that, that the lasted. one we sent Larry on, right. and yeah, he was and like, like geeking right. out? Yeah. It is yeah, very he was cool. So, so 2025 is the next time we'll see that. But in the morning, our uh, expert correspondent Phil. Is going He's got to, a graphic he made and yeah. everything to tell us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Can, you, can you explain it for us? Well, <laughs> you know, obviously it's the moon passing between uh, okay. the, the Earth and the sun. But uh, what we see is not where the moon disappears, but it does turn that rusty color. So when do you see it? Well, you don't need to catch it right at the beginning because it's not going to be that noticeable until you get into totality. And totality lasts from 417 to 552 in the morning. So, Rob, set your clock 415. You'll be fine. You can catch it okay. anywhere in that uh, he usually time gets span. gets up to walk out Snoop Dogg. Yeah, so right. That should yeah, be no, fine. No. And it will have that kind of burnt orange appearance. So it, it'll, it'll be, be clear, you think? Out. Skies should be clear? You know, they'll be mostly clear. There'll be a few clouds, but you should be able to see it at least uh, at four for part of that time, okay. you, know, you got about an hour and a half in there, so plenty of time to actually view it in totality. We do have major changes heading our way in the weather uh, world because we have a couple of fronts heading our way. Tomorrow, no problems, mostly sunny, cool highs right around 50, lakefront, upper 50s inland, most areas mid 50s. Wednesday, Thursday, if you can, get outside and enjoy. The warmest weather we'll see probably in several months. We'll be in the upper 60s Wednesday, mid 70s Thursday, getting very close to a record high come Thursday and then temperatures plunge on Friday. We're talking about mid 30s for highs this weekend and at times wind chills will be down into the teens. Could even be a few passing flurries on Saturday. Today's high, not bad, 54 degrees, still one degree above average. Uh, last year in the state, we made it up to 65 degrees. Some other numbers for you, Elgin, you're at 42, 45 in Wilmette, down to a chilly 36 in Chesterton, but the cold is there, just kind of clipping our area as it passes to the north. 
Minneapolis sitting at 36 and 40 right now in Madison. Quiet conditions around here. Some high thin clouds moving into our skies right now. They'll move out here of here before midnight, and I do think we'll see mostly clear skies for the lunar eclipse. Temperatures fall into the upper 30s early tomorrow, but then rebound into the mid 50s. Most areas a few places far south could touch 60 degrees as we head into the day on Wednesday. Look at that warm up, maybe 70 in some locations, especially south of I 80, about 68 for a high at O'Hare. This is just until noon on Thursday. Look at that at noon Thursday, 72 degrees, but that cold front arrives right around daybreak on Friday and temperatures will fall all day long come Friday. 31 to 40 for the range and lows tonight. Moonlit skies, chilly. Again, the clouds we have in the area now will move out. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, seasonably cool. Temperatures ranging from 52 to 59. Boy, do we have a range in temperatures. From 74 Thursday to 44 Friday to the mid 30s as we head into next weekend. And it looks like temperatures will remain well below normal throughout much of next week. So make the most of Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, thank you, Phil. Coming up, celebrating the champions, the big parade today to honor the Houston Astros. We are counting down to the opening of Black Panther Wakanda forever this week. Jose Sanders introduces us to the Mexican actor Tenoch Huerta. He plays warrior king Namor. Only the most broken people. Can be great leaders. King Namor is from Talakan a hidden aquatic civilization descending from the Mayans. He wants Wakanda to join his nation as conquerors of the surface world. And there's a threat. Be an ally or die. How's it feel to be a part of this whole Marvel universe? Oh my God, that's fantastic. It's a fantastic experience. A bit over overwhelming, but it's so good. It feels so good. I'm so happy. When you're a kid, you, you dream to be a superhero. And finally happened to me. We know what you whisper. How would you describe Namor? I think it's a guy who is protecting his people, protecting his kingdom, protecting protecting his culture, uh, what is meaningful for him. But at the end, the core of the character is just a simple human being, like a family guy. My mother told stories about a place like this, a protected land with people that never have to leave, that never have to change who they were. There's so much cultural representation in this thing that you bring. Do you feel a responsibility for that? And how, how's all that worked out for you? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. I feel that I feel a big responsibility and a, at the same time an honor uh, because, yeah, in Mexico and Latin America, we have the indigenous roots and we denied the, the roots for a long time. And now I hope this kind of movies, this kind of production, this kind of represent representations 
help to heal that wound and to be proud of who we are. Killing him will risk eternal war. He's coming. Congratulations. It's a wonderful performance. I, I wish I could learn how you do the flying with the ankles. So that's really cool. Uh, it's a new skill. Jose Sanders, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Nice. People filled the streets in Houston today. The Astros won the World <laughs> Series. They had quite the parade. Congrats to them. Yeah. And Dusty, we trust you. Good night. That's right. <laughs>